Now, our first speaker of the afternoon is someone who will be very familiar to a lot of you. Her name is Nancy Kogel. She is the founder of Roar, reaching out against animal, reaching out for, reaching its, uh, reaching out for animal rights. Uh, she's also producing a vegan documentary. Uh, she's a she's a tireless, tireless advocate on behalf of animals. Uh, she's a mystic, a Marxist, a mom, and a vegan activist and animal liberationist. She's been involved in the struggle against the ravages of capitalism, while at the same time trusting in the infinite loving intelligence operating through all life. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Nancy Kogel. What an amazing, beautiful crowd. Oh my God, just beautiful. Um, at this time, uh, we are coming to the end of Women's International Women's Working Women's Day and the end of Women's History Month. And because of that, I would love to, uh, number one, thank Pam and all the people who helped uh, make this happen. And I'd also like to uh, recognize Pam as an amazing woman who uh, is one of the only people I, one of the few people I know who uh, looks at the larger picture of what's going on in the world and the, and the relationships between things. In the, the, in the same pattern as Mickey Z, who I miss here today, I'd like to say peace, power, compassion to all beings. Woo! And all species! Woohoo! How many here are vegans? Great. I would ask you about how many here are vegetarians, but in my mind, vegetarian means vegan because I have never, have you, raise your hand if you have, seen cheese growing like a vegetable from the ground or eggs hanging like a fruit from the trees. Raise your hand, no? So they're not vegetation by any means. They are animal products. They are deadly toxic for human consumption, take calcium out of our body, etc. So just an aside, I haven't had any meat, I won't say I'm vegetarian, for 43 years and for 35 years, no meat, dairy, eggs, or any animal products. Going to be 67 and filled with lots of energy. So, uh, a the main, the main thrust of what I'm going to say is to ask two quest, three questions actually. Number one, what is the problem? Number two, what is the solution? And number three. How does veganism, veggie pride, have to do with it? So I think there are two causes. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, about a few months ago, scientists around the world got together and they moved the doomsday clock one minute closer to doomsday from four minutes to to three minutes to. What is propelling us so rapidly really quickly over the, or accelerating our speed towards the edge of the cliff to no return. In my mind, it's two things, and that is the system of capitalism and the system of speciesism or animal industry, animal agriculture. And the way I see that they're linked is number one, they started at the same time, about 10,000 years ago, humans got it into their minds to capture, confine, castrate, kill, steal the milk from, steal the eggs from animals. And I am like Plutarch. Like, how did it ever get into somebody's mind to do that, to take a life and, and to steal milk that belongs to a baby calves to steal eggs that wolves and foxes eat, yes, but not humans. So um, Plutarch said, I rather wonder both by accident and what 
state of the soul, the first person put to their lips gore and blood. I, ha I have 3,829 pages. I'm only kidding. Okay. So, um, that, whole, that whole system meant that they had to constantly get more grass for grazing. And the, war, the word for war in Sanskrit, agave, means looking for people's cattle to steal. So it's intimately related to war because you constantly need more grazing land and more cattle and you're fighting with your neighbor. It also leads to patriarchy because our oppression of women or domination of women by men in society because the men accumulated these cattle and grains and wanted to pass it on to their offspring. And so they wanted they they wanted to control they did control women's reproduction that way by making sure it was their offspring. It led to slavery and racism because in these wars they took slaves and they also um, went to warmer climates where there are people of darker skin. So uh, Smedley Darlington Butler uh, rose to the ranks. And he ser said, I served in all commission ranks from second lieutenant to a major general. And during that time, I spent most of my time being a high class muscle, muscle man for big business, for Wall Street and the bankers. In short, I was a racketeer for capitalism. When the dollar only seems, only earns 6% over here, then it goes overseas to earn 100%. The dollar, the, I'm sorry, the flag follows the dollar and soldiers follow the flag. That's the intimate connection. Okay, so animal agriculture. Aren't, this is, aren't humans an amazing animal? They kill wildlife, bird, deer, cats, coyotes and foxes buy the millions to protect their domestic animals, then they eat their domestic animals, kill them, then they die from those diseases, and then they, uh, they die from those diseases, then they kill millions of more animals to find cures for those diseases, and then that millions of people die every day from starvation and some are dying of laughter because we humans send out cards once a year praying for peace on earth. That's C. David Coates. So the question is, animal agriculture. Number one, it's violence and killing and cruelty that every religion, the human heart, life itself is against. It's the number one cause of cancer, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, impotence, osteoporosis. That's number two. Number three, it's destroying our planet faster than any other industry, and that includes through climate change, killing 250,000 people every year. 60,000 people die of starvation every year because most of the food goes to feed the animals. And the workers, and lastly, the meat, dairy, and egg industries injure and kill more workers and exploit black, female, and immigrant labor more than any other industry. So, what is the solution? Frederick Douglass said, power concedes nothing without a struggle. It never has and it never will. We've got to end speciesism, we've got to end um, sexism, racism, ageism, etc., and capitalism. We need a system that shares equally in all the wealth and abundance of this country and this land. So. Um, I say dare to struggle, dare to win, we can do it, we have to do it for the sake of turning that doomsday clock handle back. Power to the people, non-human animals, all alike. Thank you so much. Visit our roar table.
thank you, Nancy Kogel. Do make sure you visit her table right there, the Roar table. They've got some very interesting literature and so forth and so on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited about.